Hello guests and subscribers. The Royal Mile is part of a series of streets forming a steep thoroughfare in the heart of Edinburgh's Old Town. It is one of the busiest tourist destinations in the city and is lined with numerous shops, pubs, casual eateries, souvenir shops and small museums. It follows a descending slope for almost a mile, hence the name which was coined in 1920, and runs from the famous Edinburgh Castle to the Scottish Parliament and Holyrood House Palace, the Scottish residence of monarchs which includes the ruined Holyrood Abbey. We are at the bottom of the High Street. Here we see the John Knox House, which is considered to be the home of the rebel abode of the infamous religious reformer John Knox. How long John Knox, the great rebel and reformer, actually lived in this picturesque four-story house with an attic is not entirely clear. But it is known for certain that he died here. Today there is a museum inside this ancient building which vividly immerses guests into the atmosphere of the 16th century with its interiors, wonderfully painted ceilings and interiors and it recreates the unusual fashion which existed in Scotland at that time. John Knox is a, a place, it should be noted, which is extremely curious and unusual. Firstly, you will see how the Scots lived in the medieval era. And secondly, you will see a lot of interesting things about the personality of the most legendary John Knox. A unique museum known as People's Story tells the story of the people of Edinburgh which has been passed down over the years in oral form. Interviews and other first-hand stories records what life was like in Edinburgh in past centuries. And after seeing the main sites of the old city, you can look into one of its nearby pubs. There you will be able to try unusually tasty and hearty Scottish cuisine. To drink to all this, you need whiskey or local beer, of course. Local pub regulars will gladly tell you many interesting stories about their city, about the spirits that live in ancient castles, about national heroes, and more. <laughs> and now we are approaching the final part of the route, Holyrood Palace. It is located at the very end of the Royal Mile, opposite the Scottish Parliament with the impressive backdrop of Arthur's seat. Holyrood Palace is the official residence of the reigning monarch when he or she is visiting Scotland. Once the home of Mary Queen of Scots, the stunning building and scenic surroundings have hosted some of the greatest figures in Scottish history. The palace was built between 1671 and 1678 and has been at the epicentre of Scottish royalty since the 16th century. When Edinburgh became the official capital of Scotland, ancient kings chose to live in the beautiful and serene Holyrood Abbey, rather than on the top of the exposed castle rock. From James II and Charles I to handsome Prince Charlie and Queen Victoria, each monarch has had a unique influence on the creation and preservation of the palace. The palace has experienced a number of dramatic and important events throughout its history and is inextricably linked to major events in both Scottish and British history. The palace was once the headquarters of Bonnie Prince Charlie during the Rebellion of 1745 and is one of a number of dramatic events in the palace's colourful history. Unfortunately, filming inside Holyrood Palace is not allowed, so I will show you the exterior architecture and gardens and courtyard. James IV built a palace for himself and Margaret Tudor in 1501, and James V saw to it that a huge tower was added between 1528 to 1532. Mary, Queen of Scots, returned to Scotland after the death of her husband, Francis II, King of France, and would spend most of her turbulent and dramatic life in the palace. Repairs were carried out in 1633 for the Scottish coronation of Charles I, and during the Civil War the palace was badly damaged by fire. After Queen Victoria bought Balmoral Castle, she reintroduced the custom of residing at Holyrood House. Her return to the using the palace acted as a catalyst to ensure that the palace was updated and renovated. A 
Although Edward VII visited briefly in 1903, it was George V who transformed Holyrood House into a modern palace with the installation of central heating, electric lighting, the modernization of the kitchens and the addition of new bathrooms and a lift. In 1922, the palace was selected as the site of the Scottish National Memorial to Edward VII and a statue of Edward was erected on the forecourt facing the abbey. Holyrood House consists of rows surrounding a rectangular courtyard, one of which dates from the 16th century and it rises to four storeys and has towers topped with conical roofs. The walls of the old part are riddled with hinges. The large carved fountain in the courtyard in front of the palace dates from the mid-19th century. Holyrood Abbey was founded by David I around 1128, although it was sacked by the English in 1322 and 1385. James II was born in Holyrood in 1430 and was married and buried here. James III found the Abbey Guest Complex a convenient alternative to Edinburgh Castle, while James IV and James V expanded the building. The marriage of James IV to Margaret Tudor was celebrated in the Abbey Church in 1503. When James IV built the first royal palace in 1503 and Holyrood Palace became the main royal residence in Scotland, the gardens became the venue for tournaments, hunting, falconry and archery. There was even a tennis court and a menagerie with various animals including lions, tigers and bears. By the time Mary, Queen of Scots, lived in the palace, there were a number of walled gardens, including the walled privy gardens to the north. Mary was often engaged in archery and falconry, bowling and tennis in the garden. A new community garden opened in 220 with three distinct areas, each representing a stage in the palace's 900-year history and is being used by school and community groups to explore how plants have been used to improve health and well-being. Beautiful regular gardens cover 10 acres and are grown by an experienced team. They contrast sharply with the wild natural backdrop of Arthur's Seat. It was once a monastery garden where monks grew plants for food and cultivated medicinal herbs for use in the infirmary. Note the sundial, believed to date from 1633, the year of the coronation of Charles I. It would once have stood in the palace's formal secret garden. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to our channel.